The National Security Agency was founded in 1954 and is one of several government agencies that comprise the U.S. intelligence community. It is headquartered in Fort Meade, Maryland, and is responsible for collecting, processing, and disseminating intelligence information from electronic signals for national defense purposes. Its current legal authority primarily stems from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, the U.S. Patriot Act, and various presidential directives. The NSA may seek orders from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court ordering telecommunications and internet companies to turn over data they collect. Since the 9-11 terrorist attack, the NSA has become the primary agency tasked with identifying terrorist networks, particularly those operating within the United States. Indeed, NSA officials have claimed that more than 50 terrorist threats have been thwarted by its information gathering efforts. Long shrouded in secrecy, the massive extent of the NSA's spying, both foreign and domestic, was dramatically revealed to the public in a series of detailed disclosures of internal NSA documents beginning in June of 2013. Most of these documents were leaked by NSA contractor Edward Snowden. The leaked Snowden documents were published simultaneously by the Washington Post and the English newspaper The Guardian. They sparked a series of denials, international and domestic outrage, and calls for reform that continue today. A significant portion of the more than 1.5 million leaked documents was later obtained and published by many other media outlets worldwide. One leaked document was an internal government audit that found that the NSA had violated its own internal procedures and the law thousands of times, albeit mostly unintentionally. A massive data center to store the collected information being collected by the NSA has been built near Bluffdale, Utah, and is scheduled to open in 2014. The official NSA website may be accessed at www.nsa.gov. For class, please review the Frequently Asked Questions under the heading Today's NSA and also the section titled NSA Missions, Authority, Oversight, and Partnerships under the heading NSA in the News. The various programs operated by the NSA are far too complex and lengthy in number to discuss here, but as the leaked Snowden documents have revealed, they are pervasive and global in scope. In addition to engaging in mass collection of telephone metadata, the agency has assembled bulk email and text records of millions of U.S. and foreign citizens, has allegedly installed cyber snooping software onto tens of thousands of computer networks worldwide, has systematically attempted to weaken international encryption standards, and build in backdoor access points to commercially available encryption programs, and has obtained direct access to the servers of numerous internet service providers and other technology companies. A timeline and description of the disclosures is included in Wikipedia under the heading Global Surveillance Disclosures and may be accessed at the following site. As a result of the Snowden disclosures, Congress's reaction has either been one of outrage or defense of the NSA. Several congressional hearings have been held, and currently there are over 19 bills pending in Congress with more expected to be introduced. The legislation can be broken down into four broad categories. One, substantive reforms to the laws the NSA believes allows it to conduct its surveillance programs. Two, disclosure of the FISA court opinions that determined the programs were legal. Three, general reporting of the number and types of surveillance orders received by recipients and how many users have been affected. And fourth, reforms to the FISA court itself. 
The bills are too numerous to discuss here, but a brief summary of the bills with links has been compiled by the Electronic Frontier Foundation and may be accessed at the following site. President Obama and members of the intelligence and security communities have vigorously defended the NSA's activities, saying they are lawful, are necessary to combat terrorism, only minimally involve surveillance of U.S. citizens, and that the scope of the surveillance has been grossly overstated by the media. NSA Director General Keith Alexander told Congress in December that, quote, 15 separate judges of the FISA court have held on 35 occasions that Section 215 of the Patriot Act authorizes the collection of telephony metadata in bulk in support of counterterrorism investigations, end of quote. The Department of Justice issued a white paper addressing the legality of the bulk collection of telephone metadata, which may be accessed at the following site. The white paper has been challenged by several legal academics. Most notably, law professor Oren Kerr, who criticizes the paper as being one-sided and failing to address counter-arguments and ignoring contrary case law. Professor Kerr's comments may be accessed at the following site. In December of 2013, the eight leading U.S. technology companies wrote a joint letter to the President and members of Congress calling for a curtailment of government surveillance. The companies urged the government to adopt five guiding principles that if implemented would impose new legal restrictions on surveillance and make several existing programs more transparent and subject to independent oversight. The five principles include the following. Number one, limiting government's authority to collect users' information. Under this principle, surveillance would be limited to specific known users and government could not engage in bulk collection of data. Principle number two, oversight and accountability. Under this principle, there would be independent judicial review of government surveillance programs in an adversarial process with public disclosure of judicial opinions. Principle number three, transparency about government demands. Here, companies would be allowed to promptly disclose data about government requests for information. Principle number four, respecting the free flow of information. Government should respect the global nature of information and not require companies to locate infrastructure within a country's borders. And the final principle, avoiding conflicts among governments. Under this principle, treaties should be adopted to ensure there is a robust, principled, and transparent process for data access and transfer between countries. The technology companies, all of which collect massive amounts of data about their customers for commercial purposes, have been criticized by some as being hypocritical and essentially enabling the government to surveil citizens since if the data was not being collected in the first place, the government could not access it. Numerous lawsuits have been filed against the NSA and others by plaintiffs from across the political spectrum, ranging from churches to reporters groups to telecommunications customers to privacy groups to former NSA employees. The suits fall into three categories. One, those seeking access to records. Two, those requesting a judicial determination that various NSA programs are illegal or unconstitutional. And three, class actions seeking damages for illegal surveillance. In addition, numerous motions have been made to the Fisk Court seeking release of Fisk opinions or for an order allowing recipients of NSA surveillance orders to release their responses. ProPublica, a public interest nonprofit journalist organization, has created a surveillance lawsuit tracker, which may be accessed at the following site. 
The issue of whether the NSA surveillance programs are illegal or unconstitutional has been hotly debated, and legal scholars are divided on the issue. Several court challenges have been dismissed because of a lack of standing on the part of the plaintiffs, and the U.S. Supreme Court refused in 2013 to take a case filed directly with the court by the Electronic Privacy Information Center, a privacy advocacy nonprofit. Two federal judges, Richard Leon of the D.C. District Court and William Pauley of the New York District Court, have ruled on constitutional challenges to the bulk collection program and have reached exactly opposite results. Judge Leon held that the third-party doctrine is inapplicable and found the program violates the Fourth Amendment. Judge Pauley held the third-party doctrine is applicable and controlling and thus upheld the program. Appeals of the Leon and Pauley decisions have been winding their way through their respective circuit courts, and there remains an issue about whether the actions of Congress have mooted out the cases. The man behind the largest leak of classified information in U.S. history, Edward Snowden, has been charged with three federal crimes, theft of government property, unauthorized communication of national defense information, and willful communication of classified communications information with an unauthorized party. Snowden is currently in Russia pursuant to a one-year grant of asylum. Public opinion on Snowden is almost equally divided, with some casting him as a hero and others casting him as a traitor. Snowden was the number one runner-up to Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 2013. Read the two contrasting views of Snowden published in the New Yorker magazine, the links are in the syllabus, and answer the question of the week as to whether Snowden should be criminally prosecuted or pardoned.